the Chinese smartphone revolution is gaining momentum. In fact, in 2018, Chinese-branded smartphones accounted for a third of the European market, shifting over 60 million units. Today, I'm looking at three of the latest handsets. I've got a Mi 9 from Xiaomi. This runs a version of Android 9, has a 6.4-inch AMOLED screen and weighs just 173 grams. An RX17 Pro from Oppo. This runs a version of the older Android 8.1 and has a 6.4-inch OLED screen made from Gorilla Glass. And a P30 from Huawei, which runs Android 9 but has a slightly smaller 6.1-inch OLED screen. And because this feature is about China, TV convention dictates that I have to fully embrace the culture. I have to play Chinese music throughout my film and, for my first test, eat Chinese food. Emmanuel, hello. Hello. Even if it's cooked by a man from Spain. Ole! This is all looking very busy and absolutely delicious. Do you mind if I take some photos? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Yes, first up, I'm looking at the picture and video quality of my phones. Let's start with the Xiaomi. This has three cameras, a 48-megapixel main camera, a 16-megapixel ultra-wide angle and a 12-megapixel telephoto with optical zoom. All the phones have portrait mode, so you can get a uh, defocused background. First impressions with the Xiaomi is it's uh, really very good. It's a very versatile range of functions. Maybe occasionally just a little bit slow, but massively detailed, at least on that 48 megapixel setting. It's producing clear and crisp video. However, the colours are perhaps a little flat. Next, the Oppo, and weirdly, the highest megapixel rated camera on this phone is the front-facing camera, 25 megapixels for selfies. So let's start with one of those. Ah, what fabulous selfies they are! The Oppo has two further back-mounted cameras with 12 and 20 megapixels, and the f1.75 aperture means that this phone should perform very well in low-light conditions. Very good, very good. The uh, portrait mode on the Oppo seems to be more effective than the one on the Xiaomi. You're getting the background more out of focus and Emmanuel sharper and more in focus. It also has artificial intelligence built in that should be able to detect your subject and adjust the look of your pictures to suit. And the artificial intelligence seems to be working. It's identifying this as food. And the video looks very tasty too. Excellent colour reproduction. Well done, Oppo. Now the Huawei P30 has got the most sophisticated camera setup of the three. You can go from ultra-wide, normal lens, to three times optical zoom and beyond on one slider. This has a 40-megapixel main camera and the lenses come from respected camera manufacturer Leica. And rather than having red, green and blue pixels on the sensor, it's got red, yellow and blue pixels. It supposedly makes it more sensitive to light. The pictures are vibrant and sharp with very good detail. Like the Oppo, this also has built-in AI and it has good image stabilisation, which performed particularly well during video recording. Although some of the videos did look a little grainy when zoomed in. Overall, though, the Huawei's in the lead when it comes to pics and vids. Ah, lunch. Have to excuse me. After a delightful selection of dim sum, I'm heading out to canvas the general public. I want to find out if any of these phones can persuade the average iPhone and Samsung user to consider switching. Have you ever considered having a uh, Chinese branded smartphone? Uh, considered would be a strong word. I haven't discounted it. Mm. I've not even heard of them. <laughs> oh, I've contemplated for about 10 seconds and then went, nah. First up, the Xiaomi. Xiaomi, is that a brand you've considered? I've never heard of it before, so... This is the cheapest one, too. That's the cheapest one, yeah. yeah. It wouldn't, you wouldn't know, would you? Wouldn't you? Know. No. This is really nice. I like the black. Mm. I like the roundedness. It doesn't feel like it's mine, man. It feels like a cheap iPhone. Ah. Next up, the Oppo. I'm kind of struggling to reach the buttons on each side of it. Yes. I really don't like that weird blue. It just looks cheaper and feels cheaper. I like the look of that one, actually. Yeah. That looks really smart, doesn't it? Snazzy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Finally, the Huawei. 
Compared to my iPhone, the screen's a lot bigger. Apple likes to have a lot of black around the edge. Very um, sleek design, feels nice in the hands. About the same like aesthetic level as like an iPhone, very simplistic, which I think everyone's kind of going for for phones nowadays, so I think it's nice. Can any of my phones tempt these good folk away from their current handsets? Mm -hmm. I know they have phones that are basically the same as Apple, but I'm still going to stick with Apple. Mm. I'm used to um, iOS, I'm used to its layout. For me, it's more about the operating system yeah. rather than the phone itself. I'm 41 years old, I can't be learning a new phone. I'm sticking with the iPhone, that's what right. I do. <laughs> So, the small number of people I spoke to all decided they'd rather stick with what they know. But I'm not done yet. For my final test, I want to push these phones to their absolute limits and check out their graphics and processing power. Shaolin Kung Fu master Matthew Armes has agreed to help. He trained in China for four years to become one and now teaches students from his very own temple. If anyone can judge speed, power and laggy reaction times, it's him. Hello, Matthew. Great to see you. And his student, Henry, has agreed to help out too. Henry, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, what I've got on the phones now is a graphically intensive game called One Piece Bounty Rush. The settings within the game on each phone have been set to maximum performance, so it should be a real test of the uh, phone's processing power. Let's go for it. Indeed. We're taking it in turns to play the game on each phone while assessing the sound quality as well. That is surprises. pretty cool. The Xiaomi is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chip. It's the fastest and newest processor on test today. Colors are very vibrant. It's looking good. The Oppo is running the slowest mobile chip on test, the Snapdragon 710. I'll pass it over to you. And, uh, yeah. which was Switch out. Other. But it still seems to be doing good business. I think this one's a little bit better, actually. Ooh, graphics are pretty Ooh, I just powerful. Yeah, Huawei's looking quite nice as well, actually. Mm. The Huawei uses the Kirin 980 processor, which is slightly slower than the Xiaomi's. So my response time is bad. Mm. But it delivers smooth gameplay with no lag. It's side by side from the screen quality of all three. I mean, the Xiaomi is supposed to have the highest brightness. I can't see there's much difference. Let's see what the sound quality is like. That's the Xiaomi. Hmm. All right, not bad. I mean, this is the Oppo. That's pretty good. Mm. Let's have a look at the Huawei here. That is mm. super quiet. Yeah, that's too quiet. Enough. I could mm. just about hear it compared mm. to those. Mm. So overall, which one do you think offers the best gaming experience? I would say because of the reaction time and the sound, definitely the Oppo. Go with the Oppo. Henry, what do, what, what's your opinion? I'd probably say the Oppo as well. Well, thank you very, very much indeed. No Absolutely worries. a pleasure. Yes. You're always welcome back to the Shaolin yeah. Temple and do some Kung Fu yourself in real yeah. life. That'd be interesting, yes. Mm. Well, John, thankfully, I've got rid of George and Otis now. Did you learn much from your day immersed in Chinese culture? A little bit, yes. I think I can probably now tell my Da Hong Kwang from my Yishin bar. I just go for the chicken chow mein. From the list of traditional kung fu skills. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> anyway, verdict on the phones. Well, as we know, Huawei have had a few controversies recently, but I still think overall the P30 was the best of the three phones, but it is, by a considerable margin, the most expensive. The Oppo uh, also had lots of good features, but it's running an older version of Android, so I think that counts against it. For me, my favourite was the Xiaomi Mi 9, which also has an impressive range of capabilities, but at a very reasonable price. Well, thank you, John.